<laughs> All right, welcome back to KM6LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth using radio, uh, reimagining amateur radio in the information age. Hey, we're out in the field, obviously. This is the KM6LYW Radio Backyard. That means we're going to be testing stuff out. Uh, we've got two pieces of coax here. We've got an expensive one and a cheap one. Uh, let's see if the RG8X does any better or worse than our LMR400. This time on KM6LYW Radio. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> you guys thought I wasn't going to do the bumper music because I was outside. That's right. That's our obligatory bumper music. You guys keep commenting about that. We're just going to keep doing homemade bumper music. Um, so we've got a bunch of experimental apparatus here. We're outside. We've got a Yaesu 2980, a Yaesu uh, watt meter. I've got a few lengths of uh, cable here, LMR 400, RG8X. Um, you know, I'm outside and I, I wasn't picking up stations very well because I had ran a whole bunch of RG8X up to the Diamond X200 on the roof. And I just wasn't getting UHF stations like I normally would in the shack. And then, so I went out and bought this. This is like, this is expensive, you guys. This is like $67 for 25 feet, at least. That's what I paid for it. RG8X is going to be a lot cheaper, but there's more loss. Uh, so let's see if we can set up some uh, experimental apparatus and uh, see how much loss, what the real difference is between RG8X and LMR400. All right, so this is our experimental apparatus. We have a Yaesu 2980 over here on the right, set for 10 watts of output. And we have a Yaesu YS500, an older meter, but it's reliable. And it's hooked up to a dummy load for an antenna that's exactly 50 ohms. I measured it. And then the shortest, thickest whip of coax I could find, I think this is RG8X. Um, we'll assume this coax isn't contributing anything to our power loss just because of its thickness and its short length. So this is the apparatus. Let's, uh, let's run some power through these and see what happens. This is our control test. I'm going to go ahead and calibrate the meter and make sure that's zeroed out on calibration. Yes, we have to calibrate this meter because it's kind of old and well, this is how the Native Americans did it hundreds of years ago. They had to manually calibrate their meter. So now I'm going to put it into power mode and we're at 10 watts on the 20 amp range on the scale and we are hitting at 10.8 watts. That's why I'm going to call it 10.8 watts and I do in fact have my glasses on. So this is what I'm going to write down as our control 10.8 watts uh, through a dummy load and virtually no coax whatsoever. 10.8 watts. In fact the radio is rated for 10 watts so you're getting like 0.8 watts for free from Yesu. Thanks Yesu. RG8X, 25 feet hooked up between the uh, the radio and the dummy load through the power meter here. So let's see at 10 watts out on the radio what we get on the meter. So I am getting uh, 5, 6, 7, 8 watts, exactly 8 watts on the meter We're using RG8X. Um, so yeah, there's some loss there. That's observable loss. Okay, same test, only this time we are going through 25 feet of LMR 400 flex. And uh, we're going to put out 10 watts and we're going to see what shows up at the end of 25 feet. So in this case, we are right at 10 watts, 10 watts. So we lost 0.8 watts. That's it, going from the dummy load uh, to inserting 25 feet of LMR 400, we lost 0.8. So we were down at 10 watts with LMR 400. So let's take a look at our attenuation chart. We've got RG8X at 146 megahertz. We're losing uh, 4.5 dBs, whatever dBs are. And then for LMR400 at the same frequency, we are only losing 1.5 dBs um, in, for 100 feet. So we're going to put uh, multiply each of these by uh, 0.25 uh, because we're only using 25 feet. And when we do that, we get these numbers. 
here I did the math for you, and we predict at uh, 10.8 watts in, we are going to get 10 out of the LMR400, and if we put 10.8 watts into RG8X, we predict to get 8.3 watts out, a 22% reduction versus a 7% reduction, so that's a lot. Um, that's the predicted results. Now, of course, you know our experimental results for our control, which was just a jumper. We're putting in 10.8 watts, and we actually got out 10 watts. That's exactly matched our experiment. Uh, experiments uh, prediction for RG8X we got 8 watts out which is pretty darn close to our prediction of 8.3 watts so this uh, brand of RG8X isn't actually uh, holding up very well to the, uh, the attenuation chart and of course our experimental percentage loss this is the big thing you wanted to know because you know DBs don't mean anything to me you guys I understand volts and watts and percents that's something I can touch a DB is, is just a a weird constant. So from LMR 400 flex, which is what we were using, uh, we lost 7.4% of our signal in 25 feet. By contrast with RG8X, a thinner piece of coax and less expensive, we only got 8 watts out at 10.8 uh, watts in, and we lost 26% of our signal in 25 feet of RG8X. So if you're building a base station and you don't need something super flexible, LMR400, I think um, watts per dollar is probably the win. It's, it's one of those buy once, cry once kind of things. RG8X is more flexible, but man, you lose, uh, boy, you lose a, a lot of power. A quarter of your power in a 25-foot run. And, you know, this isn't unusual to have in your car or your mobile unit either. So I thought the numbers were enlightening. And I went ahead and upgraded from RG8X to get me out to the porch here. And uh, I went all the way up to RG400. In fact, I'm getting UHF contacts uh, where I didn't before using LMR400. So receiving is just as important as transmitting. And uh, I've got kind of a weak station here. And this is on the RG8X. Let's uh, flip this over to LMR400. You'll take note of the S meter here, which I think is the S meter. We've got three units. One, two, three. Let's see if we can get uh, a higher signal on the LMR400. And now that the LMR400 is connected, we actually get four solid S units now. Again, assuming these are S units. Now keep in mind, three S units is half your signal. To me, this kind of begs the question, is this power related? I would have expected uh, a much better receive. In fact, we're seeing S4 is flashing now with the LMR400. But uh, So maybe power has a factor. Um, if we put a ton of power through this, do we see more attenuation versus... Uh, micro or millivolts which is what we're seeing when we're receiving is almost uh, very little difference on the at least on the s meter all right thanks for hanging out with me in the field today <laughs> who am i kidding this is the backyard hey uh let me know what kind of coax you're using there are dozens of different kinds of coax at different price points different attenuation levels different levels of flexibility um, maybe we could come up with some sort of quotient you know the, the the price per foot per attenuation per watt loss and really see what coax is best for you depending on your frequency and run we've been testing vhf all day here today you know for hf actually rg8x makes a lot of sense because there's less attenuation at the lower frequencies but if you're going to be mostly using u UHF, LMR 400 is probably going to be your buddy here. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, patrons, for helping out with the channel. I don't know if we're going to be able to see these names here. This is the super low production value version of the channel today, guys. Hey, we are out in the field. So, Steve, NWTW, Fu, Andrew, Brian, Chris, Jim, Malcolm, Buddy, Brown, Robert, Kevin, everybody, thank you so much. So, patreon.com slash km6lyw. Being a patron does, in fact, have its advantages. It gets you access to the Digipi SD card image, which uh, is a data transceiver hotspot for a Raspberry Pi. So, uh, check that out out at digipi.org. My name is Craig. I'm in California. Amateur radio call sign KM6LYW and I am clear. <laughs>